Christmas? <laughs> well, not really Christmassy, but everybody has their favorite Olympic event. And in this sermon, I put some terms in here that only our gymnast would know. So she, you may want to pull this up on the YouTube for her later. Well, anyway, coming up in February, we're going to have the Winter Olympics this year, which I hate to say, but they really are my favorite. Although there are some aspects of the Summer Olympics I love, namely gymnastics, full of flips, dips, and dances. In this last week's uh, lesson, we pondered the announcement made to a young girl, Mary. The announcement indicated the Holy Spirit would overshadow her. She would become pregnant and give birth to the Savior of the world, Jesus. Uh, that's some pretty big news. As a godly young lady, she said yes to God. Now the days arrive where she can tell it's true. She's definitely pregnant. The scripture tells us that she packs up her duds and heads to her cousin Elizabeth's house. Please stand for a portion of today's text. I will read Luke 1, 39-45 using the New International Version. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We live in the physical world and maybe that's why people who are so athletic amaze us. So let's look at some physical realities that would have been evident to Mary and Elizabeth. First, when a baby grows in the womb, it moves. While it's true there are a few known cases where a woman did not feel the baby move, that's actually very rare. Most often, women do feel the fetus kick and tumble. As a matter of fact, by the late stages of pregnancy, that baby feels like it's doing gymnastics in there. Physical reality number two. The worldwide average age of menopause in a woman is 52. And because of the story we heard the first Sunday of Advent about Zachariah and Elizabeth, we can safely assume that Elizabeth was well beyond the age of menopause. <laughs> she had passed that stage of life. Then God performed a miracle and this woman, who is dangerous, According to Gabriel, in last week's text, when he makes the announcement to Mary, he tells her Elizabeth is six months old. By the time Mary gets to her place in Hill Country, Elizabeth may have been almost seven months along. Now, picture Elizabeth. And I have to tell you, this came from personal experience in my thought process. Picture Elizabeth sitting in her favorite rocking chair. Remember she is between six and eight months pregnant. Women who have had children and those precious people who make the journey with those pregnant women know some of what she goes through. Swollen ankles, sore back, indigestion. And you are so sleepy 
all the time. Anybody relate to that? Any of you sisters and husbands and cousins and stuff relate to some of that? Watching that and thinking, I'm so glad it's them and not me. Now, ladies, and those who make the journey with these ladies, who are 52 or older, oh, you know the drill. Swollen ankles, sore back. Indigestion and so sleepy. <laughs> Double planning for Elizabeth. I wonder if she was thinking this having a baby thing is for young people. What is God thinking? In today's story, when Elizabeth hears someone enter the house, her heart begins to thunder. And when Mary calls her name in her womb, her baby does a back half twist. <clears throat> this child inside of Elizabeth, who will one day cry out for people to repent, be baptized, and prepare for Messiah, gets excited. In the lesson two weeks ago, we were told that John the Baptist, son of Elizabeth and Zechariah, would be filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. Here's the evidence. The spirit kicks and moves in this child. In all this strange hidden belly growth, the Lord's at work. So powerfully that a baby in the womb somersaults and an old woman shouts words of God. As I pondered this scripture, it seemed to me that maybe the Holy Spirit is kicking to arise in our world in a new way. The scripture pointed out last week that the angel told Mary about Elizabeth's condition. I think that was a statement that would have illuminated in Mary's mind. And then when she discovered and was absolutely sure she was pregnant and the consequences that were about to hit the fan, She takes the angel's hand and she goes to see him. Maybe she went where she knew she would find understanding. This helps me realize that God in his great love brings people to us to help us in our obedience to the Bible. He puts people in our path to help us understand what God may have asked of or revealed to us. He puts spirit-filled people in our walk to help us be encouraged. People arrive in our journey who God is using to speak to and to speak through. Letting us know we can count on God all the time. These people validate and verify that God's plan and path that we have said yes to is real. Not a figment of our imagination. It may even be this morning the Holy Spirit is kicking around in our hearts telling us to stop trying to do this God life by ourselves. Mary didn't try to be a part of herself. She went to it. Maybe the Lord is doing an aerial flip inside of us, reminding us that through other people, He can and does show His presence. In the same respect, because Elizabeth doesn't hold her tongue when the Holy Spirit reveals, not only is Mary given encouragement and confidence that God is at work, Elizabeth gets blessed. God may be doing a double pipe inside of us, revealing that we are to encourage. We are to uplift. We are to speak God's word to someone who's doing everything they can to follow God, and it's just hard. 
This is difficult. This is difficult to follow God. If you are a Christian and you're not having any difficulty following God, you better come and talk to him. Because it shouldn't be tough. It should be challenged. That was free. Now I've got to find my place. <laughs> Made me stop and think as I walked in my walking chair. Who needs to hear the Holy Spirit speak through me today? Who needs to hear the Holy Spirit speak through you into their life? And you know, it's interesting to me here that Elizabeth doesn't get on to Mary. Elizabeth doesn't ask Mary a bunch of questions. Elizabeth doesn't do the should have, could have, would have. Elizabeth just begins to pray God or thank God for what he's doing in Mary's life. And understand, you read the scripture, you just read it. That was before Elizabeth had heard the story. Mary hadn't said, hey, by the way, I'm pregnant. God overshadowed me pregnant. I'm still a virgin. She, that, that's not here. God revealed to us. Elizabeth was blessed too. We get blessed and we're obedient to God. Mary was obedient to God. She said yes. She went to see Elizabeth. Elizabeth was obedient to God and praised God and assured and encouraged the man. When Elizabeth's moving baby. With Elizabeth's moving baby, the scripture says she's filled with the Spirit. Now, I don't know all the implications of that scripture, but I do know that God loves us so much, He comes and lives in us through that same Spirit. God fills us with His love, hope, peace, and joy so that we can be like he filled Elizabeth, and when he did, she spoke words of incredible encouragement to Mary. If you go out there and try to speak into somebody's life without God feeding you with the Holy Spirit, you'll probably mess it up. You'll probably say the wrong thing. And you probably won't encourage anybody. You may even make an enemy out of a friend. Mary was probably very puzzled and bewildered and possibly very anxious about saying this to God. And by her hopeful, inspiring, reassuring, uplifting words, Elizabeth confirmed what God is doing in both of their lives. <coughs> All Elizabeth does here is praise God and encourage Mary. No instructions, no anything else. I can't do want to fix it or say something that fixes it or give advice. Yada, yada, yada. Anybody with me? Mm -hmm. oh, that's not him. It's just not him. I think God's speaking to us this Christmas. Maybe people just need to be encouraged. Maybe your family just needs to be encouraged. Maybe your spouse just needs to be encouraged. Maybe your co-workers just need to be encouraged, even if they're nuts. <laughs> Rather than us telling them how, what, and ought. You say, well, it means we're And because with her encouraging, assuring, confidence-building words, what does Mary do? Mary gets filled with joy and begins to sing. Now, can you imagine the people that you encourage just breaking out in song? They might be, get accused of being Stacy Paul. <laughs> And Mary sang, My soul glorifies the Lord. She's been fully accepted. She's been reassured. She's been given. 
my soul glorified. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised. Wow, what a little encouragement to somebody can do. What a little encouragement. The song tells us 2,000 years later that God takes care of his people regardless of who they are, where they are, or how they rate in the social hierarchy. That's love. God's love is not determined by how people define success, status, achievement, accomplishment, or ability. God loves unconditionally. We don't have to earn God's love, nor can we. The Lord offers himself completely in the form of Jesus. God is a man. Elizabeth was loved, so she loved Mary. Mary was loved, and by her song, she encouraged Elizabeth. They showed love, even in all the uncertainness that would have surrounded them. I can't, I mean, we think our world's uncertain. Be 60 or 65 years old and get pregnant. Be 13 and never know a man and be pregnant. You want to talk uncertainty? And here they are praising the Lord. What a little encouragement. A young virgin mother. They would definitely make the cover of the National Enquirer, wouldn't they? But God knew they needed each other. And it's interesting to me that they didn't just think about meeting each other, they actually got together. I can't tell you the times on Sunday morning when I've seen somebody and talked to somebody and made this statement. Oh yeah, we'll get together. Oh yeah, we'll have dinner together. Oh yeah, we'll go do such and so. Uh-uh, that's what that We do it all the time. For this incredible miracle, encouragement, assurance, confidence builder to happen, they really didn't have to get together. Yes. They really had to make it happen. As a matter of fact, Mary had to take a long journey to get to the list. We must want to happen. And quick making excuses. Enough of that. Enough of stepping on toes. Mom included. It says that together they comforted, inspired, boosted, and shared. And the scripture says that three months later, Mary went home to Nazareth. She would have been showing a baby belly. But she went home with home. Her time with Elizabeth helped prepare her for all that would have transpired upon that public, very public, revelation. Today, we are loved and through each other, God confirms and assures us that He is with us and will never leave us. I love that God gives us feelings, but brothers and sisters, feelings are not always dependable and they can be seen. Thank you, America. I believe the Lord in His wisdom 
gave us each other to do this very thing. He gave us each other to walk beside as we follow Jesus. He gave us people who love us and we love them. That's a hope-filled, peace-giving, joyful reality. And every once in a while, I just want to say it to you. I love you very much. I love each of you. And who you are. And who God has made you. And for all the potential that you have. I love you for who you are. I love you because God loves you. That's why we love. You see, all of the love in the world will be a twisted love. I don't even care how good people are. I don't care how much they think they love their family or their loved ones. It will always be twisted until it's God. Until it's the Holy Spirit. I want to say thank you. So many of you encourage me and enlighten me and walk with me in the path Jesus has called me to. You guys are awesome. Our church is awesome. So on this Sunday of love, I think it's a good time to be reminded that we need to love our stuff all the time, as much as we can. And being Advent, for Sunday Advent, we always have communion. And what would be a better thing when we think of communion than the love that we just show to us? Communion. love for it, and it gives us a connection to love each other. The Lord himself ordained his holy sacrament. He commanded his disciples to partake of the bread and wine, the symbols of his broken body and shed blood. This is his table. The peace is for his disciples. Let all those who have a true repentance forsaken their sins and believe in Christ and his salvation draw near and take these emblems and by faith partake of the life of Jesus Christ to our souls hope, joy, peace, and love. Let all those who are seeking to know more about Jesus receive the elements of an asking heart. Everyone is invited at least in this church to participate. May the love of God and the love of the church work in our hearts. Let us remember that communion is the memorial of the sacrifice and death of our Lord. It bestows grace for today, and it gives us hope in the future. Let us pray the prayer of Jesus' heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord. Please get your elements ready to receive them. We are reminded that in the same night, our Lord was betrayed. He took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance. Likewise, after supper, 
He took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to the saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink and be thankful. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your encouragement, Lord. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for giving us each other. Thank you, Lord, for this holy meal that we share. And Lord, thank you for your love. Unconditional love. Love that is beyond our imagination. And love that lives in us. <laughs> thank you so much. We bless your name. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.